Hi guys, my name is Alvin and welcome to Not Sharing on Chris Gather Faith. And today I'm trying new format and I uh, hope you guys like this new format because the sound will be better. So today's topic is about can Christians cast out spirits? And you'll find this sharing pretty interesting and pretty amazing too. So uh, this also will help you to see how Jesus actually has authority uh, over spirits and you can read more in Mark chapter 9 verse 14 to 26. Alright, so you have time to read the whole Mark chapter 9. Alright, so let's read uh, from verse 14. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law argued with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to meet him. Take notice that they were excited to see Jesus. As you can see from their actions here, they ran towards him. So he wasn't someone that nobody knew and everyone knew who Jesus was. So then after that, uh, he asked, what are you guys arguing with them about? All right. He just asked. Then a man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has been robbed him of speech, means that the son cannot talk. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, crunches his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Very interesting, this point here, at this point of moment, Jesus asked a question. Here's the thing you need to know. Do, do you think that Jesus didn't know what the answer was? All right. So actually he knew, but he deliberately asked the question so that the disciple can see for themselves what the real issue was. All right. And, and interesting to see here is that the disciple who followed him for so long and been learning with him for so long all right, in his uh, ministry, they still don't uh, know how to cast out demons. All right, as you can see here, the disciples who follow Jesus was not able to cast out the spirit. So what did Jesus reply? He said, you unbelieving generation. Sounds like us. How long shall I stay with you? How long should I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. I believe he's actually saying this to the disciples. <laughs> Not so much to the, the crowd. All right. He was saying this directly to his disciples about their unbelief. And I can relate this. I mean, many people in church today can relate this. A lot of people don't believe that they can cast out demons. In fact, many people are afraid to even talk about this as if it's a church taboo subject that you shouldn't talk about. And truly is, all right, to be honest, when I first started to learn about casting out demons, praying the name of Jesus, I was personally very afraid because how often do you see in the church where you are allowed to learn how to pray and cast out demons? In fact, the pastor will tell you, oh, don't do that. It's very dangerous. They may go into you. Well, that caused a problem because it caused you doubt and you don't believe. And that's the reason why a lot of Christians do not believe they have the authority of Jesus to help other people to cast out demons. I can tell you, I have cast out demons before and it has helped many people uh, bring a, cut off their obstacles and oppressions when you see the demons leave their body and they feel so much relief and peace when Jesus actually healed them. So it's very important for us as Christians to know that you can cast out demons in the name of Jesus as long as you believe. So after Jesus said that, they brought him, I mean the boy, uh, and interesting when the, the spirit saw Jesus, never didn't do anything, or he didn't say anything, the spirit immediately threw the body, uh, boy into a concert and he fell to the ground and rolled around and foaming at the mouth as what just now that guy said. Exactly what happened. All right. So notice all right, Jesus' next question was, he didn't say anything. He asked the father how long he has been like this. All right, and then the father replied, since childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. 
But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Notice how much doubt there is in his reply. He said, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Means he actually doesn't believe Jesus can actually do it because he used the word, if you can do anything. And doesn't that sound like us sometimes when we pray to God and say, hey, God, if, if you can do this, I will do this. Or if you can heal this or do this for me. All right, please do this. So one thing I learned from actually reading this scripture is remember when you pray, remove the word if. Never have the word if in your prayer. Because once you introduce if into your prayer, you actually have already had doubt even before you started praying to Jesus. Then Jesus said, very clearly, what you mean by if you can? <laughs> right? What do you mean? I mean, if you really want to say that, it's like, hey, what you mean if I can? <laughs> All right. He said, everything is possible for only one who believes. All right. And I'll talk more about this verse later on. All right. So immediately, the boy's father exclaimed and said, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. So he asked Jesus for help. All right. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he actually rebuked the spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you come out of him and never enter him again. One thing very interesting I like about this verse is that the prayer is only a few words. All right. He said, you deaf and mute spirit, which basically is we know from what we read earlier that the spirit was not allowing the son to talk. So obviously the son cannot talk. And he only said, I command you come out of him and never enter him again. Notice how short the prayer is. All right. And notice how our pastors in our church pray for evil spirits. <laughs> all right. We tend to see right now, all right, that many people today pray very very long prayer do you really really need to pray long prayer in fact you don't have to because here we already have confirmation that short prayer is sufficient because as long as you have faith you believe all right you can cast out demons all right but the problem is a lot of people today they are praying so long prayers that sometimes the longer you pray the less belief that person actually has all right, I experienced that personally, so I'm telling you from my own personal experience. And I pray very short prayers nowadays. I say, in the name of Jesus, I command the Spirit to go in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, and you watch what happened. All right, and many times you will see, without a doubt, there will be a release of the Spirit as long as you believe and not be afraid. Okay. So after Jesus prayed that, which is what we read, the spirit struggled and convinced him, him and violently and then he came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. Very interesting is that it seems during the Bible times, anyone that lies down and don't move, a lot of people presume he's dead. And I guess it's not only just that, but I guess the spirit was making him so pale looking i guess that when he lie on the floor people presume that he's dead that's why they, 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 they might have that kind of reaction so jesus knowing their thoughts took him by the hand and lift him to his feet and he stood up why did jesus do that all right jesus do that to demonstrate to show them that through his authority and belief in him that anything can be done and they show it through his through his action all right to show everyone that this person is being uh cast out from the evil spirit and he is cured and blessed and cleansed so summary the request about this whole story was actually about casting out evil spirits from the father's son but the disciples were not able to cast out the spirit because of their unbelief. And I strongly believe many people who are seeing this video right now, even you as Christians, may even have their unbelief because maybe you never even see an evil spirit before. And you may even think it is not important. I can tell you that 
it is very important to know how to cast out demons because it is part and parcel of being a Christian. And many Christians don't have the opportunity to even have a chance to pray and cast out demons because no one teaches people how to do it. All right, and do it in faith and in belief in Christ. And many people have fear about casting out demons because they're scared the demon will jump into their body. As we have seen, some people may argue with me and say, oh, Christians cannot be possessed by demon evil spirit. I will beg to differ. I have seen many Christians, in fact, and non-Christians even more, that is got possessed by demons. And you, and you can see very obviously that they are possessed from the way they react to you when you pray. So I can say that everyone should be cautioned and know that they can cast out demons because if you don't do it, who else is going to do it? Because these people who get possessed needs help, right? Just like people who are sick. People who are possessed also need help because they have some hindrance behind them in order to feel the Lord's peace, all right? And many times when you pray for such people who have these things, all right, you will, they will tell you that they will feel more peaceful and a release from something else. And most of the time, they will just tell you thank you. All right, so good to learn how to cast out demons. Another common mistake I realize, uh, a lot of people like to misquote this verse, everything is possible for the one who believes. I don't know about you, but when I was a new Christian, many people use this verse for almost everything. Okay, they use it for maybe for work or maybe for uh, sickness or maybe for for whatever thing. All right. I can tell you that it is really the wrong context because this belief, it has nothing to do with your personal uh, desires, personal dreams, personal needs or whatever thing. It's all about faith in God in relation to increase in God's glory and not selfish gain. I'm sorry to tell you, if you are praying for more money, more career, or more whatever thing, it is the wrong type of thing you should be praying, unless you are praying for all those things to help you increase in glorifying God, then I will say that is the correct type of prayer. But unfortunately, even myself, I was guilty of doing this. I always pray for things for my selfish, indulgence of using whatever I want in terms of wealth and money and all those other stuff. And I can see in America it's very popular, especially for the prosperity gospel. A lot of people fall into it. And it's very sad because once you fall into prosperity gospel, you actually pray for wealth and health. All right. You actually find the victim of actually idolizing them without you knowing it. All right. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants you to be uh, idolizing those things rather than idolize God. And I have seen many people who didn't get what they want in terms of health and wealth, they get disappointed with God and then they left Jesus. So that's what the devil is trying to do. All right, so I hope you like today's sharing. It's a pretty short sharing in the new format. I believe the audio quality in this video will be much better than my previous video. So I hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching. I have this sharing almost every Monday. Alright, and you can go to my YouTube channel or Roku channel to watch as well. My name is Elwin Pang. Thank you for watching. May God bless you.